Good morning. Okay, so what is your favorite day? Your birthday, yeah. How about anybody out there? Is your favorite day your birthday? Yeah. What about you? What's your favorite day? Probably the same birthday. Yeah, some people were saying Christmas was probably their favorite day. Some people Thanksgiving. Okay, what about what's your favorite day of the week? Oh, Friday. Friday? Maybe Saturday? Yeah, when, you, when I asked at the 5.30 service last night, uh, I, there was a, a large group of people that were retired. I said, what's your favorite day? And they said, every day. <laughs> yeah, my favorite day of the week is Thursday because I'm off on Friday. So that means Thursday's my Friday, Friday's my Saturday. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So what about, uh, do you know what day is the Sabbath day? You know what the Sabbath is? What day is Sabbath? Anybody? Sunday? Saturday? Sunday? Friday night to Saturday, right, Jay? That's right, yeah, sundown at Friday night. So that's technically when the Sabbath would happen. But I have learned this past week that the Sabbath is considered to be a day of rest. And it's a time that we recognize all the goodness that God has given us, and we Place God first in those moments, which means when could Sabbath be? Every day, right? Not only today, but any and every day is an opportunity for us to have Sabbath, to rest and to recognize the beauty that God has given us. We're going to be talking about the Sabbath today in the sermon, so I want you to listen for it, and we can talk afterwards if you want. Let's pray. Thank you, gracious God, for being with us, for blessing us with a day of rest and for helping us to use it to learn more about you. In your son's name we pray, amen. It's a really lovely line in scripture today. The Sabbath was made for humankind. Humankind was not made for the Sabbath. And um, I I went and looked at a bunch of different translations to see what this meant uh, from the Greek and, 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 and the original languages. And the best translation I saw was this. The Sabbath is made to meet the needs of people. People have not been made to meet the needs of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people. Now, the Sabbath comes to us from, uh, from Exodus when Moses is coming down off the mountain with the commandments and he's going to talk to the people and they're in the, they're in the Exodus, they're, 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 they're in the wilderness. And he says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy And he references creation, how God rested on the seventh day to look at all the beautiful creation that God had made and that it was good and that God was in a relationship with his creation and just took it all in, embraced it. And then in Deuteronomy, our Old Testament lesson today, it's again the story of the the commandments and Moses is sharing the commandments, but this time he says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Do you not remember that we were slaves in Egypt, how we worked, how we toiled? There was never a break for us. We were constantly moving and now God has freed us from that slavery. We remember this Sabbath, the blessing that God has given us, the relationship that we have with God and how we are now free. Remember our story. It's a time for us to remember. So the Sabbath is a special place in, 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 our, in our faith and in our, in, our, um, uh, in our journey. And it's part of our relationship. It is a gift that has been given to us, this time of rest, to reflect. So Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, which, by the way, we're in the second chapter of Mark. Jesus hasn't even finished calling all the disciples yet. The Pharisees are listening to Jesus And they're watching him and his disciples. And the disciples are walking by on a Sabbath, and they're picking grain, the heads of grain. And what are they probably going to do with this grain? They're going to make, yeah, they're going to make some bread with it, right? They're probably going to make bread with this grain. And they're plucking the heads of grain. And the Pharisees are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they're doing this on the Sabbath. Jesus, are you okay with this? That this isn't lawful? They're not supposed to be doing this on the Sabbath? And so Jesus looks back at them and says, you all think it's okay for David to go into the temple and to take the bread of the presence and give it to his companions? And we're just going to pause right there. Does anybody know that story? 
Because I didn't, I didn't have, I, we got one person that knows that story. That's wonderful. I, I had no clue about this story about David going into this temple. So I looked it up. It's in 1 Samuel. And David has uh, uh, already slayed Goliath and, and, and done those things. But now he's traveling with his soldiers, his companions. And they go into this temple. And they, and they walk in. And the high priest is there. And David says, I need five loaves to feed my, my soldiers, my companions. And I love that he's asking for five loaves, right? Uh, but he says, I need five loaves. And the temple priest is like, we don't have anything. All we have is the bread of the presence. But you can give this to your soldiers, your companions. Just make sure that they eat it reverently. So then I'm like, well, what is the bread of the presence? And that comes from Exodus. So whenever they're in this wilderness journey and they're traveling and they're, and they're building this tabernacle, the house, the Ark of the Covenant, they're also going to build an altar. And there's descriptions on how they're going to do this. But on top of the altar, they are to place the bread of the presence. And this is a loaf of bread that has been placed there for hospitality to God, to Yahweh. This is something that is a gift to God. And nobody's to eat of it except for the priests. And usually they didn't even eat of it. And so this is more of a, a recognition that God is here in this place. And we're saying thank you for all that you have given us. A constant reminder that everything we have has been given to us by Yahweh, the bread of the presence. So David goes in, and he eats this bread, and he gives it to his companions, and this wasn't lawful for him to do so. So Jesus is looking at the Pharisees who have just complained that the disciples are plucking grain to make bread and saying, but you all think it's okay for David to have this bread of the presence, which was set apart for the holiest of holies. And he looks at the people, and he says, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people. Not people weren't made to meet the needs of of the Sabbath. And then he enters into the synagogue and he sees a man with a withered hand. Clearly this man is probably there to receive bread, to receive something because he's not able to do things for himself. And he invites him to come here and he goes and stands in the middle and he looks at the crowd and says, should we heal this man or let him suffer on the Sabbath? Is it right for us to kill or for us to save people on the Sabbath? And everybody is quiet. Nobody says a word. And that's when we see this emotional response from Jesus. Our scripture says he gets angry. Another, another version says he's filled with rage. And then it shows how he's grieved because of their hardness of heart. Where have we heard that phrase before? Hardness of heart. If you look back in the Exodus story, Pharaoh had a hardness of heart. When God is going through Moses and all these plagues are going to happen, there's ten plagues. And the first five plagues, the hardness of heart is by the Pharaoh himself. The second five plagues, God hardens Pharaoh's heart. And I don't know about you, but I had a kind of an issue with this because my understanding is that God is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and, and, and gracious and merciful. Why would he harden Pharaoh's heart? Well, hardness of heart does not mean cruel intentions or mean or anything like that. Hardness of heart means I'm firm, I'm resolute, I'm stubborn, I'm oppositional. Thank goodness none of us have hardness of heart, right? Yeah. And so the Pharaoh has this hardness of heart, and it's, uh, uh, this one, one, one fellow wrote about how it's kind of like a child, and you're the parent, and the kid wants to go out and play, but it's freezing cold outside, so it's not Texas, right? And it's really cold outside, and you say, you need to wear your coat, and the kid says, no, and the kid goes on outside to play, and you watch them as they're shivering outside, and they're really, really cold and they're not going to come back in, are they? They refuse to do it. They are firm in their decision. The next day, the same thing holds true. You need to wear your coat. I'm not going to wear a coat. And they go out and play anyway, even though they know what's going to happen. There's a natural consequence that comes. So Pharaoh has this same sense of hardness of heart, not in a cruel way, but in a way of like, I am not going to change. I'm not going to do it. I'm firm in what I'm doing. And plague after plague after plague happens. And so God recognizes that Pharaoh is not going to change. So God is going to use this for a divine purpose and that Pharaoh's heart will remain hardened for the divine purpose of freeing the people from slavery, of delivering them out of the bondage of slavery. So Jesus is grieving in this temple that the people are not responding to the help of this person with this withered hand. 
and are caught up in doing it by the law, the letter of the law, and he can tell that they have this hardness of heart that they are not going to change, and he's now transitioning this to a divine purpose because it's the first time in the Gospel of Mark, Mark 2, that we see they begin to plot to destroy Jesus. The Pharisees are going to tag team with the Herodians, which they shouldn't. I mean, the Herodians are these Roman people that are, they don't want any Jewish people rising up, and the Pharisees know this. So he brings the man forward. He says, open up your hand, and he's healed. And the Pharisees team up with the Herodians to destroy him. The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people. People have not been made to meet the needs of the Sabbath. We have our own ways of doing things. Even at Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, we have our own ways of doing things. We have certain things that we're going to do, certain things we're not going to do. Um, and it's hard for us because a lot of times we don't, we don't like to change. Nobody really likes to change. This past week, I was meeting with someone up here at church, and she's not a member of this congregation. Um, she was sharing with me some struggles, some problems, some issues, and we were talking back and forth, and it came time for us to, to pray at the very end of this, and we prayed, and I thought we were about to leave, and then she closes her eyes, and she starts to speak in tongues. Now, I've been a pastor for a while. I've been involved in church life my whole life. I've never been in front of somebody as they're speaking in tongues. This was very new to me. I've seen it online. I've seen it in movies. I've watched it on, on YouTube clips and stuff. But here's a person right in front of me speaking in tongues, and then she starts to sing gospel hymns, and then she speaks in tongues, and she's singing gospel hymns, and she's speaking in tongues. And I realize I've just entered her time of Sabbath. And she was communing with her God, and it was her way of doing it, and it was very different from my way of doing it. And I went from judging to recognizing that there are many ways for us to speak to God. That's not my way of doing it. But I can't tell that she's right or wrong in that. Afterwards, she looked at me and she goes, I don't know about you, but I felt the spirit. And I said, me too. It's easy for us to judge. It's easy for us to have those hardness of hearts where things aren't going our way. And we want them to go our way. And we want to demand that they go our way. And we get really mad when they don't go our way. And today we're invited to bring those hard hearts to this table of grace where we receive the bread of the presence and let God take those hearts and use them for a divine purpose to go out into the world and serve others and share this message of love and forgiveness and grace and mercy of a God that has gone all the way through creation to find a time to rest, to be in a relationship with us and reminds us to keep the Sabbath. It's holy. It's a gift that has been given to us. It's a relationship that we have with the divine. And we have been made for a divine purpose. And now we get to go forth and share it with others. The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of you. Amen.